Welcome to Clinical Trial Materials Online Course Demo. I would imagine that you have come across at least one of these words during the course of your career. Whatever the referred terminology, it is highly likely that your company has experienced some form of restructuring in the past few years. Most of the above changes shown here have a positive impact, for instance, re-engineering might align teams more closely and enhance working relationships and role understanding. Similarly, globalizing could provide greater access to international colleagues and resources, making it easier to manage CTM across borders. Others, of course, are not so positive and immediately suggest more work for less people. However, it's important to understand that any change, positive or negative, is going to result in additional work. For example, processes and systems will need to be updated and implemented, people will need to be integrated into teams and trained, or work and responsibilities may need to be reassigned. Regardless of the change taking place at your organization, it is critical that the CTM specialist understand where they fit into the change, and manages their work and responsibilities accordingly. So what's behind all of this change? The reasons are numerous and varied. Some can be anticipated, others are unexpected. This slide provides a few reasons for the changes we have seen in this industry over the years. Many of the blockbuster drugs that were the backbone of their organization's sales have lost exclusivity. This has resulted in a huge decline in sales, through massively increased competition from the generics industry. While the company can create mid-term and long-term plans, aimed at lessening the impact of patent loss, we know drug approval is not a given. The road to market is littered with disappointment. Often the only way to recovery from a major loss of profit, is to make changes within the organization. Prime examples of this are Oshi's Valium, Pfizer's Lipito, Esai's Aricept patents, all of which expired and left significant holes in each organization's revenue. Similarly, a declining economy can affect an organization's profits and available funds for research and development. This, coupled with recent reforms in healthcare, could see pharmaceutical companies being forced to contribute towards such areas as prescription drug costs, particularly in the U.S., has caused many organizations to reconsider its infrastructure. Another area that has seen significant growth over the years is outsourcing. The move to outsource is cyclical, with companies deciding to bring CTM activities in-house for a while. Then with a change in leadership, or other factors described here, the companies return to the outsourcing model. With many pharmaceutical companies moving toward the biotech model, more study management responsibilities, including CTM, are being contracted out. Of course, not all factors contributing to change are negative. With our world becoming ever smaller through advances in technology, opportunities to explore new markets, and patient populations are more within reach. These new markets and patient populations have opened up new indications and new opportunities to be first to market. New technologies may also mean that, in some ways, it is easier for us to perform our jobs and communicate with the people who form a critical part of the supply chain. Lastly, the scarcity of blockbuster drugs coming out from pharmaceutical companies, which keep these companies profitable. There are four stages of development that will be discussed throughout the course. They are Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3 and Phase 4. Phase 1 studies are small in nature, Phase 2 are early trials that evaluate the effectiveness of the drug. Phase 3 are large-scale studies conducted in support of a future marketing application and, Phase 4 which are post-marketing studies can be used to supplement existing data, further evaluate specific patient populations and possible identify additional indications.